talk later, we're going to start this interview about the budget, about the budgeting at Thorough Council. If there's one thing, a couple of things you're really unhappy about, and I know it's a long list, what would you say you're really unhappy about? The lack of openness and transparency. Um, you, you would have seen, seen the papers um, at being part of the um, press team. That there was absolutely no details of how the money is being spent. There's actually not much detail on how the money was being saved either. But every year we always get at least something saying we're cutting this, we're cutting that, we're putting more money into this service, and more money into that service. But this year, absolutely nothing. Um, just the normal, well, we've made these decisions in Cabinet, you should go back to the Cabinet papers and have a look for them. Well, that's okay for me, yeah, I'm a councillor, I know where to look and where to go. But we've got residents out there that their lives are going to be directly affected by some of the ways that this council is spending their money. They're going to have to go on an electronic paper trail just to find out what's being supplied and what's not being supplied. And within that lack of transparency, we had a number of issues where this council is spending money that we don't even know is spending money. Cuts that are being made that people don't even know the cuts are being made. Tilbury Ferry, prime example, £87,000 cut from the budget. Um, it will still continue to, to be service the people of Tilbury and Gravesend. And if at the end of the year the council hasn't found sponsorship for it, then the taxpayer will have to pull up, pick up the bill up, which is just wrong. Either you cut it from the, the uh, budget or you don't. And if you are going to cut it from the budget, be open and transparent about it. So do you find that all around the borough, even even up on One Tree Hill and Langdon Hills, the people saying you know, they're going to cut rangers, etc. So do you find is that where you find confusion? At one point, you're going to lose rangers or Santa in the woods, you know, popular events, thousands of people, and then other times there seems to be massive investment on things that people do question as well. Yeah, the, um, uh, yeah another example was the uh, mention that yeah, we've got four million pounds to spend on. Um, improving the council offices. You know, it's not coming out of revenue, it's, it's coming out of a capital. Well, that capital is from selling um, uh, other items of um, property that the, the council owns um, or raising it through uh, borrowing, through potential borrowing. And of course, the taxpayer's got to cover that cost. And whilst we're spending £4 million doing up these offices, would it be not be better to perhaps spend £4 million improving our roads? Um, by cutting the amount of um, heavy goods vehicles using lighter residential roads, by putting in you know, decent pothole repairs. Um, yeah, there are many, many ways this council should be spending money, but it seems to be choosing to spend it in ways that baffle not only us, but residents as well. Sometimes from, an, from a press bench point of view, yourself and, and other councillors, maybe your colleague like Barry Johnson, you seem to get more and more exasperated. What, you know, what can you do beyond being exasperated? Apart from, obviously, the public have got to vote on May the 7th. Well, the agenda, but <laughs> so can, can it's not, not solely down to Barry and myself. You know, there are thousands of residents out there that hopefully will realise that, you know, the way that this council has slowly been evolving since Labour have been in control, which is getting all the deals being done behind closed doors, having everything being done, not so much in secret, but difficult places to find it, um, go out there and vote for Conservatives and make sure that we're in charge. Once we're in charge, we'll imp implement our open and honesty um, plans for, for, for Thurrock. Um, we'll put plans in place so people can readily question, but also readily be able to find out where information is being kept and how we are spending their money. And of course, going through the year, making sure people understand why we've spent the money in those areas. Because sometimes there's a valid reason for spending millions of pounds on temporary staff, for instance. When you're spending twice as much as your nearest local authority neighbour um, on temporary spending, it does then start to question, are we doing enough to retain and bring in the right sort of staff, train them up, and then grow our own, as it were. Um, but from a, from a point of view as a councillor, the way we'll do it is to continue to expose where the waste is, or where we feel the waste is, to continue to uh, make it clear that this is taxpayers' money that's being spent unwisely, and hopefully get that message across. I would obviously prefer to be in control of the council so we can do this much more speedily than is happening at the moment, but you think over the past four or five years, more and more doors seem to be closed when it comes to decision-making, and that just isn't fair. Do you still feel strongly that the committee is too far dominated by Labour? Yes. You, we really shouldn't have a system where Labour, as the administration, also have the chairmanships of the ex uh, committees that are there to do the checks and balances. It's unfair. Um, you know, we've been very, very clear since 2010 
that you know, should we be in control, it would not be us chairing these committees. It would be members of other parties chairing the committees. It's only right, it's only fair. That way you could at least give the impression of transparency, if not actually achieving some transparency. Because people in government, people look at government, see Margaret Hodge, Public Accounts Committee, Labour, Keith Vaz, Labour, uh, on his particular committee. So do you think you need to go, you know, whatever happens, say in May you are in opposition again, you know, do you think you need to go in and negotiate a bit better with, with John Kent? This has been tried year on year and year, and each year it comes back the same. Well, no, I've discussed this with the group, and no, we're not doing it. Um, and it just seems to be another head-banging exercise on our part just to try and get some form of fairness um, and openness in Thurrock. So I don't think it would matter how hard we, we try. Obviously, it's down to him and down to, to his group. So you know, a good leader would step in and say, no, I'm sorry, group, this isn't what is right. This is what we should be doing, and this is how it will be perceived. What are you looking for from the next chief executive? Well, um, as I said earlier in, uh, in the week, whether we have a new chief executive or a different model of senior management is, is, you know, is a good time now to, to look into that. Do we just need a managing director, one that just keeps everybody on board and moving them forward, or do we need a chief exec that's going to be leading from Thurrock, um, taking forward all of our big plans for regeneration? Um, whilst we have got officers dealing with those, if we have one person at the top making sure that Thurrock is first, and not just looking into Thurrock, but also looking outside of Thurrock to make sure that Thurrock is first, then you know, we're going to be moving forward in leaps and bounds rather than, as we tend to be, as a snail's pace. Going back to, to the council, when you see regeneration projects, whether they're fully bloomed or just as tiny acorns, do you see those as, is it only fair to say that you know, whether it's, that these are, you know, Labour's been in control for five years, so Labour must be doing something, have done something right here. I've got a broken watch that sits on my bedside cabinet. It's right twice a day. It's only fair that Labour write once or twice a year. Um, yes, these regeneration plans are good, and they are good for Thurrock. It's nothing political about this. That's why we support them, because it will make Thurrock a better place. Perfect is long overdue for regeneration. I used to live on the Garrison Estate many, many years ago, and the only thing that seems to happen is we've just got more and more flats and not much else. So, yes, it does need to be brought screaming into current times. The same with Grace. Grace is in desperate need of a full regeneration programme. I can think back to, I think, 2002, uh, a former Conservative uh, councillor asked the question about Grace being in decline. Um, and there was this general disagreement from uh, John Kent and the Labour group saying, no, it's absolutely perfect, everything is fine. It was, I'd love to know where he got his rosé-coloured glasses for, for Grace because it was going bad then. It's now at a point where the only way to regenerate or restart greys is to regenerate the whole lot, not just in pieces, let's deal with the one-way system, let's deal with the underpass, let's deal with um, Argent Street, let's actually put one whole brand new master plan for greys on the table and make sure greys works. Because as soon as greys works, then we can start using those plans in Ockenden, in Corringham, in other places, so we can get other town centres to work. And once we get those town centres to work, again, Thurrock starts on the up. You mentioned uh, Avon and Ockenden. These areas now, you know, we're covering a lot of subjects here, you know, uh, have become UKIP heartland. How are you, you know, say for Averley, um, and Ockenden, Bellis, etc., and this question will be you know, equally challenged for Labour, how do you think you're going to get those areas back, or are you just going to have to sit it out? Uh, no, we never sit it out. You know, we will always fight for th those seats. You know, people in um, anywhere in Thurrock, that are voting UKIP are doing so because they feel that that is the right thing to do. I would challenge that. Look back on what's happened since we've had more than one UKIP councillor. They supported by sitting on their hands and doing nothing. Labour taking the administration again. Um, yeah, they supported a budget where actually you wouldn't be clear on what the money was being spent on. You know, there are lots of things that work fair. Another thing, which is a very odd. Um, example of where UKIP vote with Labour to stop workfare, which is actually one of their own uh, manifesto um, promises that they will make sure that everybody goes on the workfare programme that needs to go on it. So it seems strange that they're going against their own party policy locally. So residents need to look at their, their history of voting and look at the way, not only that they have voted, they've voted with us on a number of things as well in the budget, but to have a look and think, is this really what we want for Thurrock? 
And if it's not, come back and vote for Conservatives. Get us back in and we will show this council can be open, transparent, and they will know where their money is being spent. And it will be spent wisely on things we have to spend it on and the things that residents can expect us to spend it on, but not on things like paid union posts, not on uh, Grace Beach Cafe losing forty, fifty thousand pound a year, not on translation services that are sort of eighteen, nineteen thousand pound a year where we just don't need to spend that kind of money. That's not going to save us ten million pound a year, you know, it, but it's going to go some way to saving us ten million pound a year. Add them all up together, there's a hundred thousand. So it doesn't take an awful lot of those to get to start getting a couple of thousand. And that means we're putting the money into the right services that residents want and residents can expect, rather than those that they just don't know where that money's being spent. Well, thank you.